was interesting to hear John say that this really became an issue about five years ago because um, in 2007 I was involved in doing um, a piece of work um, with CBRE on the whole issue of sustainability, energy efficiency, and we felt that um, the whole green agenda was coming down the tracks and developers really needed to get their act together and start thinking and looking at international experience. Now, obviously, we all know what happened after 2007. We went through a phenomenal economic crash. The property market experienced a, a deterioration that was never anticipated and, and certainly is was much sharper than, than anybody anticipated or thought. And we've had um, a complete decline in construction activity. And just to, to let you know, Russell, there's absolutely no speculative development going on in, in anywhere in, in the country at the moment. So um, really what happened in terms of the economy and the property market crash had kind of put the green agenda on the back burner. And the recession has made it extremely difficult to try to justify why anybody would spend on green technologies because there certainly is no evidence whatsoever of any element of a green premium being paid either in terms of rents or capital values or indeed in terms of yield for green buildings. Um, with respect, I think a lot of developers would like to aspire to providing green buildings and contributing to the built environment, but really it isn't their biggest concern at the moment, particularly if they're answerable to NAMA or one of the banks. They're more interested in letting the building and getting income coming in than worrying about their impact on the environment. Um, I really don't think from a marketing point of view as well the green agenda has really um, come on to the the spectrum yet. If we look at today's pe property pages in the Times and the Independent, it's full of ads of um, properties that are being listed for sale and they'll all mention the price and the yield and the location and the quality of the covenant. Not one of them will mention how green or energy efficient that building is because people don't really see the value add of promoting how green a building is. They certainly don't think that it will impact on the letability or the saleability or the price they're going to achieve. So what actually is sustainable development? This is a quote that I would have used in that research that I did in 2007, trying to get developers to understand what we meant by sustainability. De developing a building today that meets the needs of the potential occupiers, but was also thinking of, of future generations. And what we felt was driving green at the time was public sentiment was moving in that direction. We obviously had the Green Party in government at that time, so we were very, very conscious of, of green issues. A lot of talk about climate change, global warming, um, waste output, recycling, all of these terms that you're all very familiar with. Technological advances had come on as well, and a lot of the design teams and planners were very anxious to incorporate the greenest technologies. And um, I suppose it had implications then for everybody in the property sphere. So from occupiers, um, investors, the developers of the accommodation, the design and planning teams, and to some extent lenders are beginning to think as well, is there, was there an implication for them? And certainly from the property agent's point of view, we were all thinking, is there something from a marketing point that we're missing because we're not promoting these or working with our clients to enable them to develop the green buildings? So again, just reiterating what was driving it, obviously the green movement right across Europe, our green party in power, um, the EU energy performance which came in in 2002, um, being built into building regulations right across the world, and obviously things like building energy rating certificates which we're all very familiar with at a local level now, but probably more um, au fait with it in relation to residential property than, than commercial. And then obviously in the UK and the US and other jurisdictions, um, voluntary assessment codes like BREAM and like the LEED system. And obviously Ireland doesn't have an, an official line as to which of those we're going to follow. Everybody assumes it will be a version or a variation of the BREAM assessment, but we don't actually have an equivalent. So what you did see a number of years ago is quite a lot of developers spending <coughs> quite a lot of money to get professionals in from the UK to do a BREAM assessment on their building in Ireland simply so they could say if this building was in the UK it would be BREAM excellent or BREAM outstanding or whatever it might be. But there was nothing in the legislation here to make them do that. They were doing it from their own point of view, thinking it might help the marketability of buildings. Um, a lot of the work that I did back then, a lot of the, the documentation on this sector keeps talking about this vi vicious circle of blame. Everybody has aspirations to incorporate green features and, and do their best, but nobody actually wants to be the one to have to do it. 
So the situation at the minute is occupiers are saying, yes, we would like to occupy green buildings because for corporate social responsibility, etc., etc. We want to be seen to be in these buildings. We also believe that um, they're cheaper to run. We also believe that um, they're just going to be much more efficient and as a lot of the speakers have alluded to, maybe our staff are going to be a bit more productive if they're in one of these buildings. Um, but certainly it isn't the driving agenda. So a lot of occupiers at the minute, they will be driven by going into a particular location, they'll be driven by cost, they'll be driven by the public transport networks that are beside a particular building. I don't know that any of them have green agenda right up at the top of their, their list. Certainly they might have aspirations to be green and to fulfill their, their corporate social responsibility, but the 12.5% corporate tax rate might be a bigger driver, certainly for operators like Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of these big names. I think it's the corporate tax rate that's the biggest carrot as opposed to um, a green building. The occupiers then, that leads on to the design teams. So a lot of the design teams and planners, architects, engineers say, well, we could build these, we're getting expertise from all over the rest of the world, but the developers aren't really asking us to design them and the planners aren't really pushing for them, so why should we bother? Equally, the developers are saying, well, we would provide them, but that's not what the occupiers and the investors are looking for, so we're just going to continue doing what we always did and design the buildings that the occupiers actually want. Um, and certainly, I think in terms of a lot of the design, things like um, tinted windows and external blinds and all of these things that are being incorporated into buildings, they're prohibitively expensive in a lot of cases. And what the developers are saying, the occupiers actually don't want those. And sometimes they're stripping out these things that we've put into buildings to make them more green. They want to be able to open the windows and this, you know, it, it's, it's coming from what the occupiers are looking for. And equally, the investors saying, we would fund these buildings or we would buy these buildings, but the occupiers aren't demanding them, so we're not going to worry too much about it. I suppose our view is, this is the current situation, and there's a sense that that is going to change. And what the, 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 the circle is going to go in the other direction from now on, we're going to see occupiers actually demanding it. So as well as looking for particular locations and places where they can get um, ready access to the staff that they need, um, they also want to have green buildings and it's moving up their, their list in terms of particularly um, taking the running costs into account because you're moving into a market where energy costs are, are becoming very, very topical and people want to, to reduce operating costs where possible. So it's moving up the agenda. So occupiers are going to start asking for these buildings. Investors in turn in a market where Obviously, they're looking at hedging their buildings and future-proofing buildings. Um, investors will obviously pay some sort of a premium for buildings that are likely to preserve their value that little bit more, and maybe Brian will elaborate on that later. The developers then are in turn going to say, well, if the investors and the occupiers are demanding these buildings, we have absolutely no option but to provide them. So if we're building a new building, we have to ensure that it is as green as, as possible to provide. Equally, um, I think design teams are going to, um, going to start incorporating technologies and I think as time goes on, a lot of the technologies that they're looking at are becoming less prohibitively expensive, so it's becoming much more affordable. And I suppose one byproduct of the downturn that we've just seen is a lot of our construction industry have gone out of the country to work for the next few years. Hopefully they will come back and they'll have seen lots of new and exciting and cheap technologies that can be incorporated in the future. So I suppose it, the future is, is changing and we are going to see more demand for green buildings going forward. What are the drivers going to be? I suppose the, the, the big corporate responsibility, people want to be seen to be occupying these buildings. A lot of the bigger multinational companies have a social agenda built into their, their model and they have to be seen to be meeting that equally. There's a lot of government and legislative change coming down the tracks. Um, akin to what we've heard that's, that's going to happen in the UK and I suppose in time we're going to face that as well. And it's going to be pretty much a, a big issue for Ireland because we're in a market now where there's virtually no bank funding. So we're, we're building up and storing up a problem where we have a lot of vacant and available buildings, no money being spent whatsoever on refurbishing or upgrading them in the current climate. So we're storing up a big obsolescence issue. And I think if legislative change comes, we could find ourselves in the same scenario where there will be a certain cohort of buildings where it'll actually be illegal to let them until they're, they're up improved. 
technologies I've mentioned, um, lots of improving technologies and, and hopefully getting cheaper as time goes on. And I suppose a big driver from an occupier point of view is cost savings. Um, cynically, a lot of the developers will say, well, why should we pay to pro provide these in buildings when we're not actually going to get the benefit of those cost savings? It's actually going to be the occupier. But I suppose, again, you have to provide what the, the occupier wants in today's market. And then a lot of discussion about the value implications, and I would agree with Russell that there's absolutely no um, green premium evidence available in the market here today. An occupier will certainly want to be in a green building. Um, it'll be on their list of aspirations, but at the end of the day, um, it comes down to the money, and they're not, ne not necessarily going to pay a higher rent simply because a building is, is a higher rating. And maybe from an investor point of view, in buying a new building, they may well pay some sort of an, a yield premium because of the, the defensive qualities of the property, but certainly from an occupier point of view, there's no evidence as yet that that is the case. There's implications for everybody, and I suppose the implications are quite different depending on who you are. From a developer point of view, you're going to have to change your, the way you've always done things, but there could be implications for the letability, the marketability of these buildings, and um, you could improve tenant retention, reduce voids in buildings, etc. So that's the, the benefit for you. For architects and design teams, again, you have to change what you've always done and adapt to new models, bring in new technologies, look at international experience, and um, work very, very closely with the occupier. And something we've always said to occupiers is, if you are intent on going down this route, the earlier you can engage with your design team, the better and probably the more cost effective. Because going back trying to retrofit buildings is obviously going to be much more tr problematic and obviously costly as well. From an occupier point of view, obviously win-win for them because they have cheaper running costs, more efficient buildings, etc. But you can provide the greenest building going, and if the occupier isn't educated sufficiently on how to actually get the most out of the features that are in that building, it's, it's kind of a waste of time. So really a lot of education has to go into using the technologies that you're incorporating into the buildings, and occupiers are going to have to stand up to the plate to learn how to, to maximise the use of those. In terms of investors, again, obviously huge implications there. We haven't really seen any major evidence of it as yet, but I suppose one key change that we have seen in the Irish market over the last while is we've gone from a market where 100% of the investment activity was domestic players to a situation where probably 80 to 90% of the investment spend going forward won't be Irish investors. One, they can't get the funding, and two, most of them have been so badly burnt in the last five years, they're not going to come back out buying again. So your buyers are going to be institutional type buyers, predominantly from outside the country, most of whom are used to Bream and used to lead in other jurisdictions and will start to demand the same sort of ratings in Ireland. And finally, lenders, and it isn't something that's on any bankers, um, Irish bankers' agenda at the moment. They have much bigger problems to be worrying about. But interestingly, I was talking to one of our CBRE colleagues in the US the other day who was telling me that for um, build certain banks in the US, if you don't have at least a silver lead rating, they won't even en entertain lending to you on a particular building. So they're starting to build into their, their lending programs um, the green agenda and uh, decide which buildings they're willing to lend on and which not. Now obviously I think we're an awful long way away from that in an Irish sense, but it's something to be aware of. And finally then, just in conclusions, um, I would argue that even though a lot of the occupiers that are coming into the Irish market are multinationals, which have um, an aspiration to be green and go into the greenest buildings, our industry, property industry, hasn't yet fully embraced sustainability. We know it's coming down the tracks. We've kind of tried to hide and hope it'll go away, but as time goes on, we're beginning to realise that's not <coughs> likely. Um, occupiers to date not really pushing too much for green, but we can see that starting to change. And of a, we don't have a regulatory environment, so we don't have a, a voluntary assessment methodology. This is about to change, as I said. I think there is obviously a lot more research that has to be done, so it's welcoming to see people like IPD um, doing research on sustainability, trying to prove what are the value implications. And I think once developers begin to see that the, maybe there is a green premium to be achieved for incorporating these features, maybe that will change their thinking. 
Um, we need an international benchmark, so I suppose the simplest thing for Ireland to do would be just to, to adopt a variation of BREAM, and then we'd be able to see very clearly with our closest neighbours how our buildings compare relative to, to energy usage and all of the other measures. And I suppose just to finish up that even though there mightn't be much evidence of it in the market today, it is coming down the tracks. Um, we're probably not going to see a premium on rent, but if that's what occupiers and investors are demanding, that's ultimately what we're going to have to provide. So we need to get our heads around this legislation and start to think in, in a greener way. So that's, that's me. Thank you.